Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Ultra Series Circuit. We are finally back with week four of the tournament. We are in the Swiss rounds of the tournament. There has been a little bit of a break and disruption due to things going on outside of the channel, which has meant I haven't been able to catch up on these episodes and do the coverage for this tournament as I'd like to. But hopefully going over this week and next week, we're going to catch up right up to where we are with the tournament because we've had some incredible matches so far and things are really heating up now to the point where we're getting close to crowning our Ultra Series champion. We are in the Swiss stage of the tournament right now, so we're going into week four. We've got one more week of Swiss after this, which is Swiss week five, which will be next week's, which will be this week's episode, obviously, as well. Try and get both in this week. And then we're moving on to the group stages of the tournament, which are going to be very exciting. So whatever happens with the players when they finish the Swiss rounds, they get put into a ranking system, and that, that determines what group they will proceed on to for the next portion of of this tournament very exciting and uh, I cannot wait to get into the group stages and start covering those before we get into the top cut of the tournament and the knockout stages of the ultra series circuit so without further ado guys thank you so much for tuning in if as always if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel and leave your comments down below let me know what your thoughts are on the games that we do cover on any players that you are cheering for in this circuit or any questions you've got about joining the circuit in the future because we will be doing more circuits as we go forward in the VGC seasons going forward so this is the 19th season we'll be definitely doing another flinch squad circuit for the 2020 season and it's going to be bigger and better and always but before that we've got to do all of the coverage for the Ultra Series circuit. And then we've got the invitation on which will be a live streamed event in the summer to uh, encapsulate the whole circuit and crown our Flinch Squad Circuit 2019 champion. But getting on to today's episode, we need to have a look at the matchups for this week. So going into week four, we will have a look at what the pairings are going into this week. So as you can see on the screen in front of you now, we have week four up. We've got Krim versus Marcus, Alex versus Salty Electabuzz, Worms Eye versus Will, Nightlight versus Ryan PB Herbert, Nappy versus Pinko VGC, Johnny Hacks versus Stu, Salkrin VGC versus Cameron, Costa versus Yorine, Chansey Mansi versus Shade, Kazumi versus Pokemon VGC, and Xenophist Ace versus Luigi. So, some cracking games here. Some of the ones that I would like to highlight Worms Eye versus as well would be a, cr a really good set I'd imagine as well as all of them Chansey Mansi versus Shade as well a top of the table tie there so it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top there and just because we've had requests for players that are attending events coming up soon they've not wanted us to feature their matches because they want to sit on their teams for coming weeks so hopefully the players that we haven't featured so much of in these early days of the tournament will feature as we go on but the match that we're going to showcase in today's episode is going to be Urine versus Costa. So, without further ado, thank you for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let's get into today's game with Urine versus Costa. So, we're going to have Urine on the bottom of your screen, Costa on the top of your screen under the username Hacks, and we're going to get straight into this one. We're seeing Costa here all in his comma or gear and Pikachu hat kicking us off in style, and he's going to lead out with this Tapu Fini and the Xerneas here. Tapu Fini going to Activate its terrain and Urine gonna send out the Groudon and Incineroar here. So there's the Xerneas Fairy Aura activating, followed by the Misty Terrain from this Tapu Fini. And then we are gonna see probably the Intimidate from the Incineroar. Not really gonna affect both of these special attackers on Costa's side of the field. And this Groudon now on Urine's side of the field gonna Primal Revert and reveal Primal Groudon. Put himself in a nice position, you know. Urine's got the fake out support here from this Incineroar going into the his first turn he's going to be able to shut down either the Xerneas or the Tapu Fini from doing anything and throw out maybe a big attack from this Groudon or set something up himself for the Swords Dancer substitute from this Groudon here. It'll be interesting to see. We are going to see Costa straight away just remove the Xerneas from the equation and bring in Rayquaza. It is going to hit the field. Going to be immune to these Precipice Blades that are potentially coming out from the Groudon. Going to activate that Airlock as well to nullify the fire type attacks as we see a fake out just into the Tapu Fini and a fire punch come out into that Rayquaza on Costa set the field and Yoran doing a nice play here breaking a potential slash from the Rayquaza as well which is always good and shutting that type of Finny down from being able to do very much because we know how good of a support Pokemon it is going to be we're going to 
to see the Groudon now retreat from your side of the field and the Tapu Fini hit the field and activate a Misty Seed, boosting that special defense by one stage as it enters the field. We are going to see the Rayquaza on Costa's side go for that Mega Evolution and reveal Mega Rayquaza. Going to put itself into a really strong position to start throwing out some big attacks now, especially not intimidated from your own side of the field. The Delta Stream does activate, which will further support the Rayquaza going further in this match. We are going to see an Earth Power now from the Rayquaza, indicating that it is a mixed Rayquaza into that Incineroar. Could also be an Assault Vest variant that we've seen as an Icy Wind comes out from the Tapu Fini into the Tapu Fini and the Incineroar on your own side of the field, slowing both of these targets down. But neither target really matters too much because they're not the fastest Pokemon anyway, as we do see a Z move come out from this Incineroar. It is going to actually reveal the Z move. So is that variant? It isn't holding the Berry. It isn't holding the Assault Vest. It is going to throw out a big Z move. You've got to imagine it will probably be into that Rayquaza slot, which it is. It's going to launch the ring. Here we go. John Cena moment. Here we go. The suplex coming out from the Incineroar. Is it going to be enough to take down the Rayquaza? It is going to be a big bit of damage, but it hangs on barely. Huge, huge turn there for your eye. You know, the table's turning where you think the Earth Power's doing a big bit of damage to the Incineroar, but that Z-move coming in so clutch for him there. As we see the Rayquaza now retreat in kind of probably threatened by a potential icy wind coming out from this Tapu Fini. We are going to see the Incineroar hit the field for Costa as a Scald comes out revealed from this Tapu Fini into the Incineroar and will be enough to pick up the Incineroar on your own side of the field with a critical hit. Not sure if that mattered there, but it may have done as we see an Icy Wind now thrown out from the Tapu Fini on your own side of the field. Going to tie up the speed stats between the two Tapu Finis here after being put down to minus one on the switch in on your own side of the field and the Incineroar taking a speed drop as well. So, Groudon now going to hit the field. It has got to contend with a potential fake out coming out from Costa's Incineroar this turn and uh, will activate that Desolate Land once again and put himself in a nice position to start doing some damage, especially after this fake out going into this next turn. Groudon just going to protect to get around this fake out, doesn't want to take fake out and then icy wind damage here or fake out Nature's Madness damage. So we are going to see just the protect there and the Nature's Madness coming out, but it does actually go into the Tapu Fini and avoid as we see a haze come out from Costa's. Tapu Fini going to just remove all stack drops, especially that Icy Wind and the, the Nature's Madness was from Urine's Tapu Fini there. So Rayquaza are going to hit the field once again as Incineroar retreats this turn. Um, kind of threatened by a Precipice Blades coming out from this ground on Urine's side of the field and the Delta Stream overwriting the Desolate Land. So we do see another Nature's Madness from the Tapu Fini now into Costa's Tapu Fini. Doesn't miss this time. Taking 50% damage with the Precipice Blades following up here. It's not going to affect the Rayquaza and does avoid the Tapu Fini, that is a huge turn. As we see a Scald come out from the Tapu Fini on Costa's end, and oh, it's so close to picking up the knockout, but hangs on with three HP here. The Groudon not in a great position now, but that Scald coming in huge for Costa on his end. As we see the Groudon now protect on your own side of the field, we are going to see the Rayquaza go for a Dragon Ascent this time, targeting into that Tapu Fini, which is proving to be a bit of a pain in. Uh, Costa's side with all of these support options that it does have. The Dragon Ascent doing a nice bit of damage there. Seeing it down to just above a quarter health there as an Icy Wind now returning out from this Tapu Fini. Going to be enough to take down the Rayquaza even in the Delta Stream and just a lot of the speed on this Tapu Fini on Costa's side even further. So you do see the Rayquaza now go down and the Tapu Fini is going to take another speed drop here. Now you've got to think for Costa, does he bring in his Xerneas now? Or does he bring in the Incineroar? As we see a light screen set up on Costa's side of the field, just to kind of help out with the, the, the rest of this game. It is the Xerneas that comes in now, and you've got to think that maybe the Xerneas switches out for the Incineroar, protecting this turn potentially, but got to worry about this Groudon still, as it does threaten with Precipice Blades if that Incineroar does come back onto the field. We are going to see um, Euron not even take any chances with this Groudon Preserver for later, just switch it out, bring his own Xerneas to the field, as we do see Costa bring in his Incineroar for that type of Finny, for that fake out support going into this next turn. If he does go for the Geomancy here, which you think is a probably quite a nice opportunity to, but maybe you want to go for a fake out and. Um, and then try the Geomancy in the next turn. But we are going to actually see the Tapu Fini outspeed the Xerneas and go for a taunt, shutting it down. No potential Dazzling Gleam coming out here. The Fini does actually take that with its Psychic Sea boost that it has got and does retreat this next turn as we are going to see a critical hit Dazzling Gleam onto the Xerneas there, doing some big damage. But 
the fake out now present from the incineral on your own and costa side of the field going to really hinder the ability to set up a geomancy here for your iron as he does protect his xerneas and now the incineral going for a fake out into that slot where the tapu finny just goes for another icy wind this tapu finny on your own side of the field doing a lot of work especially with that site the misty seed activated you're going to see just another icy wind is going to lower the speed again on the tapu finny and incineral on the costa side of the field here and it's really quite even going into these next two turns as we see the geomancy now come out from the xerneas we have seen his already from costa's tapu finny has he went for it this turn though that is the big question or does he just play around it thinking hmm maybe he's already seen the his and you know he's not going to risk the geomancy but you're not falling for that just gone straight for it as we see the geomancy set up from the xerneas boosting that special attack sp speed and special defense as we see a taunt come out from the tapu finny going to prevent any his if possible which is what Costa went for in a U-turn now coming out from the Incineral gonna go back and pivot out and get the Xerneas out onto the field for Costa but things not looking too good here as we know the Tapu Fini is gonna outspeed everything on Costa side of the field has got access to that taunt so can shut down the Xerneas if it does decide to go for the Geomancy and the Geomancy from Urine's boosted Xerneas really going to be able to cut through things like the Tapu Fini and that Incineral if it does come back onto the field we're going to see a Moonblast now into the Xerneas here from Urine it is blocked by that and that taunt and the taunt coming out as well blocked by that protect as an icy wind does come out from the opposing tapu finny on costa side of the field and going to reduce the speed down on this tapu finny not pick up the knockout but very close to it and reduce the speed to that down of this xerneas by one stage just giving it a plus one speed boost here as the light screen now does wear out and this is where your can really take advantage of his xerneas now so incinero going to come in for Costa as he does retreat and keep his Xerneas around for later on. Wanting to probably remove the Finny on your own side of the field, that's the big thing, but can he do it with these big potential Moonblasts coming out from the Xerneas here as it does fire into this Incineroar, not really worrying about the type of Finny on Costa's side of the field. You've got to think that the, the Haze is not a threat now that it has been taunted into the Incineroar, the Moonblast goes, and procs that Figgy Berry to give it a little bit of health back as an Icy Wind comes out from the type of Finny on your own side of the field just further reducing the speed on that type of finny and incineral here and we are going to see Costa's Tapu Fini throw out another Icy Wind. Just remove that speed boost from the Xerneas on your own side of the field and potentially pick up the knockout now onto this Tapu Fini. We have got the fake out to contend with now this next turn from the Incineral, but you've got to think in this situation you would probably prefer to have the Xerneas sitting next to the Incineroar to get your own Geomancy up rather than the Tapu Fini at this point. But at this point, Urine's still in a nice position to just double target that Tapu Fini, press of his blades and Moonblast it to stop a potential uh, here's coming out here as we do see the fake out into the Xerneas. Precipice Blades coming out from the ground. I'm going to outspeed the Tapu Fini and the Incineroar. Should be enough to take down both targets here, which it is. And now this should be enough for Urine to wrap up this first game. Very close game and really well played from both players. It was very back and forwards, but... The fast Tapu Fini with that Misty Seed boost coming in super clutch for Yorine in this match and maybe catching Costa off guard. As you do see the Xerneas hit the field now. It could still be a speed tie because the Icy Wind has reduced the Xerneas' speed by two stages, but we are going to see Yorine's Xerneas. Good information for game two, faster and outspeeding the Xerneas on Costa's end and picking up the knockout with a Moonblast. So Yorine taking an early lead here with a game one win. So we'll go straight into game two here. Going to see Costa on the top of your screen once again rocking that coma all gear as we see him lead out this time with Nihiligo and Incineroar making an adjustment here to game one where he didn't really bring that Nihiligo but bringing it to game two identifying that it could be a big player in this game so we are going to see Urine lead out with the Tapu Fini and the Groudon again we're going to see Intimidate from the Incineroar now procking onto this ground on which is very useful and like game one where it went into the finny and the xerneas it is going to be very useful against this opposing ground on that does come out and really he's got the fake out here to start pressuring with the incineroar as well as that nihiligo type of finny coming out onto the field it does get the misty sea boost again and put itself into a nice position but isn't going to really want to take too many sludge bombs from this nihiligo nihiligo is threatened by the ground on obviously the precipice blade is going to be threatening a lot of damage onto that slot Lot, but uh, wants to retreat here as Costa turn one takes it out of play for that Rayquaza and we are going to see 
it hit the field get rid of this desolate land ability with its airlock and immunity to these precipice blades as you see a fake out into the tapu finney here just preventing any icy wind support this turn around as the precipice blades comes out from the ground i'm going to be hitting into that incineral obviously the requires that immune to it with its flying type attack and incineral on minus one taking it pretty comfortably for a weakened uh, a weakness that it does have Groudon now switching out wants to in reset that intimidate drop and incineral hit the field getting an all important intimidate onto this opposing rayquaza although we all we've seen from the rayquaza really is dragon ascent and earth power so maybe it is mixed maybe it is assault vest as well as we do see the rayquaza now and costas and go for that mega evolution and reveal the mega rayquaza and um, but it has been intimidated now in like game one where it wasn't it is going to be in Unintimidated, sorry. Get this Delta Stream up, and it will be able to throw out some big attacks. We are going to just see an Earth Power into that Incineral slot, which was the Groudon. Do some nice damage there, un unaffected by the Intimidate, that special attack, and an Icy Wind coming out. But it does avoid the Rayquaza. That's a big turn there. The Rayquaza dodging any damage. It does hit the Incineral. Incineral, not really too worried about the speed drop though on this side of the field, as we do see a U turn now from the Incineral into the Tapu Fini. Going to get itself out of there, preserve that intimidate for later and the fake out as well as we are going to see maybe Nyligo hit the field once again which it is for Costa come out and then start putting a lot of pressure on his side of the field paired up nicely with this Rayquaza they can go for the earth power as well we are going to see the Ray just switch out doesn't want to take too much from the icy wind damage that could potentially come out from the type of finney followed up by a fake out from the incineral that is active on your side of the field gonna see the incineral now hit the field for costa once again the nyligo just protecting this fake out that could be coming its way this next turn as we see a fake out from the incineral on your side of the field into the incineral on costas and does proc that magical figgy berry that we saw in game one and give it all that nice health back put it back into a good position for the rest of this game as we see an icy wind now just spammed out from this Tapu Fini on your inside the field and one issue I think you've got with the Misty Seed Tapu Fini is as good as it is and we saw how much work it put in game one it doesn't really want to switch out because of the issue that it will lose its seed boost if it does we are going to see the Incineroar now switch out for Urine and Xerneas hit the field activating that fairy aura along with it as we see the power gem come out from the Nihiligo no fake out from Costa's uh, Incineral this turn as we see an icy wind fired out from this in Tapu Fini once again the power gem did a nice bit of damage to the Xerneas there so I'll probably put it in range for a sludge bomb but the speed drop kind of helping your eye out very very useful going into this next turn as we see the intimate the Incineral now you turn out onto the Tapu Fini just going to reposition and it'll be interesting to see if this requires that comes back onto the field but it isn't it is going to be the Xerneas now and pretty free to get the setup if it wants to but it still has to worry about the potential taunt from this type of finny on your own side of the field now is Xerneas on your own side of the field going to switch out ground I'm going to hit the field once again for your own as we are going to see potentially a taunt from this type of finny into the Xerneas slot but maybe Costa doesn't fall for that because he has been punished by that game one as the Xerneas now does just protect this turn going into the potential taunt from the Tapu Fini which does go into that slot from Urine just covering that Geomancy boost as a clear smog comes out from the Nihiligo gonna hit into the Groudon just in case the Geomancy comes out from Urine's Xerneas that turn but the Groudon actually hit in the field instead now Costa not in the greatest position as we do see the Xerneas now switch out and Incineroar hit the field once again gonna get another Intimidate onto this Groudon and it would be well be very close if we do see a Precipice Blades to see if it can pick up the knock out onto the incineral this turn Nihiligo is going to just retreat as well doesn't want to entertain any precipice blades damage and costs are doing well to preserve it for later in this game it does so well once the ground unfolds on your own side of the field the Nihiligo has a really good time at dealing with the rest the remainder Pokemon that Urine has we're going to see and nature's madness come out from the type of Finny it does avoid the incineral that's a huge turn and the precipice blades missing as well really really big turn there as we see the ground on now protect on your own side of the field we are going to see the Incineral go for a fake out into this Tapu Fini. Shut that down this turn as a Dragon Ascent comes out. Is it going to be enough? It is going to be into the Tapu Fini. If it's enough to take it down, this is a big turn for Costa to pull things back in this match. And it is going into the Fini and it is enough to pick up the knockout. Big, big turn there 
for Costa here, taking down that Tapu Fini. We saw how good and useful that was in game one for Urine, being able to support his side of the field so well. Now replaced by that Xerneas. Xerneas isn't in the greatest position. It can do a lot of damage to this Rayquaza with Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, respectively, but it doesn't really want to take a Dragon Ascent, and if it tries to go for the Geomancy here, it will take some big damage from both of these physical attackers on Costa's side of the field. We're going to see the Incineroar now cycle in for Urine as we see an Earth Power come out from the Rayquaza into this Incineroar slot. It is going to be enough to pick up the Knockout, leaving the Xerneas unchecked though here on Urine's side of the field. If it does go for a Geomancy, which it is going to go for, absorbing all of that power. Going to get the boost on the Special Attack, Special Defense and Speed side of the field for Urine and put himself in a really nice position to kind of close this match out. If he can just manage the Nile Legal, um, and he does have the perfect partner for the Xerneas here with the Groudon ready to come back in, overwrite the Delta Stream ability and start really doing some nice damage to this Rayquaza. But we are going to see a Snarl come out from the Incineroar now, reducing the special attack on the Xerneas, which has just boosted to plus two, now plus one with the Groudon entering the field once again for Urine. <coughs> Desolate Land now activating on this Groudon overwriting the Delta Stream ability as we see this next turn unfold a Moonblast straight out from this Xerneas into the Rayquaza. Suspecting that it is a Salt Fest after the Dragon Ascent drop though, going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout on this plus one that it is at the moment. Precipice Blades now coming out single target into the Incineroar, unintimidated, going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout here and Urine put himself in a great position going into these latter turns of this game. Can he close this set out? That is the question. Xerneas now coming out onto the field for Costa. And we are going to see the Nihiligo as well hit the field. Um, but Nihiligo in front of one of the things that it never likes to see is that Groudon. Precipice Blade is going to be easily able to clean it up if it can get one attack out. Nihiligo just going to protect this turn. You're not going to see it attack or attempt to attack here as the Groudon protects this turn. And this could potentially leave the G the Xerneas. Oh, and we're seeing, uh, yeah, just a protect from the Xerneas as well on Costa's side of the field and a Moonblast into the Xerneas slot now. We are going to see this next turn play out. Bit of a dead turn, that last one. Moonblast coming out from Urine Xerneas into the Xerneas on Costa's side of the field. Plus one, not quite enough to pick up the knockout there, but we are going to see the Continental Crush come out from this Nihiligo, the big Z move here, going to be fired off. And you've got to imagine it's got to be targeting down that Groudon slot. It is neutral, part ground, part fire. It will be hitting neutrally into this slot. It is a special type attack as well, so hitting on Groudon's weaker defensive side. Can it pick up the knockout? If it does, this is a huge play from Costa here. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout. Precipice Blitz coming out. It voids the Nihiligo avoids the Xerneas avoids and now the Xerneas able to get the Moonblast off it is under speeding this Groudon picks up the knockout that is a huge turn here and really opens the game up for Costa to pick up a win maybe if he can get a, a, a clear smog into this Xerneas now remove these Geomancy boosts this is going to be huge we're going to see the Xerneas on your inside of the field just go for a protect the clear smog coming out from the Nihiligo now into that slot into the protect and a Geomancy here Costa really capitalizing on on these precipice blades misses from this ground on and getting the geomancy in his favor now and be able to get boosted up and all Costa really has to do now is protect his Xerneas and go for a clear smog into Urine Xerneas which is already protected you'll remove the boosts and then his Xerneas is going to be in a prime position to clean this match up this next turn and uh, really those Precipice Blades just punishing Urine here really unfortunate for him we do see a double protect from the Xerneas here as we see a Moonblast no protect from the Xerneas on Costa side of the field and a clear smog into that Xerneas slot we are going to see a Nihiligo do just be enough here, I think, to clean up for Costa. As we do see Moonblast from Urine Xerneas into the Xerneas on Costa side of the field. The clear smog going to be something that comes out now into the Xerneas on Urine side of the field, removing those Geomancy boosts, doing some nice damage, and definitely putting it in range for a Sludge Bomb this next turn. 
going into the latter stages of this and the Xerneas now protecting just trying to stall out as much as it can drag this match out get as much information as possible I guess for your eye here and just kind of gather his thoughts going into for going into this game three we're gonna see just another protect your eye getting all the protect here as we go into the latter stages of this game with another sludge bomb into that protect but I just fear that there's not really any coming back for your eye here another protect but it does fail this time third time not so lucky as a sludge bomb now from Costa as Nyaligo into the Xerneas and picking up the win. What a way to end game two, tying up this set going into our third match here. The Precipice Blades miss though was huge from your end of the field and we'll go straight into this game three with Costa again on the top of your screen, rocking this comma or Pikachu hat. Leading off with Incineroar and Tapu Fini here. It'll be interesting to see if he brought the Nihiligo. It was so effective for him in that game too. But Urine, the one switching things up here as he does bring the Salamence this game. Leading off Salamence and Incineroar. So he's got the double Intimidate this time around. And another immunity to those Earth Powers that the um, Rayquaza was quite effective with in the game one for Costa. So we are seeing all the Intimidate cycling. We're going to see the Misty Terrain activate from the Tapu Fini here. And um, oh, three Intimidate. It's going off all at once. I wonder if we'll see. The Salamence is pretty pressured here from a fake out. I see wind from the, the, the Incineroar and the Tapu Fini. But then Yoran does have Intimidate fake out of his own. I mean, fake out of his own that he can utilize to pressure across the side of the field. Whether he goes for that into the Tapu Fini or not. We're going to see a fake out from Costa's Incineroar into the Salamence here. And a fake out into the Tapu Fini. Just trading fake outs here. So a bit of a dead turn uh, from both sides of the field. The Tapu Fini on... Uh, Costa side of the field. Still in a nice position to throw out an icy wind. This turn we are going to see a tailwind from the Salomon setting some speed control here. But the icy wind now coming out from Costa's Finny doing some nice damage to this Salomon here. Just above half health and doing some decent damage. Well, chip damage to this Incineroar I should say as it does reduce the speed by one stage the opposing Incineroar on Costa side of the field going for the U-turn going to just pivot itself out of here and get something back onto the field maybe the Requaza which we do see now and both Intimidators out on the field for Urine so a good time to bring the Requaza onto the field to start really pressuring Urine's side as we do see a U-turn from the Incineroar got into the Requaza do a little bit of chip damage but more importantly give Urine access to reposition his ball position here bringing in the ground on to start putting on some pressure from his end of the field but in front of a Rayquaza it's not really going to be the best thing to have out because of that earth power that we have seen and no amount of intimidates are going to weaken that for your eye. So you've got to expect maybe the Groudon to switch out this next turn, but what comes in for it? Because if the Incineroar comes in, it's not going to enjoy it. If there's a Xerneas in the back, it's still not going to really enjoy coming in on an Earth Power. But we are seeing the Groudon switch straight out and that Xerneas, as we've mentioned here, come in for Urine. He hasn't brought the Tapu Fini in this match, which is really interesting. As we do see the Rayquaza switch straight out for Costa and Incineroar hit the field once again, which leaves the Salamence open to throw out some attacks. It is minus two, though on its attacking stat now after double intimidate from the Incineroar from Costa side of the field. We're going to see a Draco Meteor though fight out from the Salamence. It is going to be into that slot which was the Rayquaza and now the Incineroar protected by the Misty Terrain though so not going to be doing as much damage here as it would have done to the Rayquaza as another Icy Wind fired out from the Tapu Fini into your own side of the field. The Salamence not quite going down to that second icy wind here um, and it speeds that has dropped though and you've got to think the Salamence probably wants to switch out this next turn which we do see Urine do and the Groudon hit the field once again and the Intimidate out for Costa so the Groudon in a way better position but now Urine in a good position with the Xerneas out on the field if we do see that Rayquaza come onto the field again then we are going to be in a better position for Urine because he can throw out a Precipice Blades he can check the Rayquaza with a Moonblast or potentially a Geomancy as well but we are going to see the Incineroar now on Costa's side of the field go for a fake out into the Xerneas stop a potential Geomancy here so a little bit of a dead turn here Incineroar going to switch out now you've got to expect Rayquaza to come back out onto the field preserve that Intimidate for later maybe the Nihiligo 
of just protecting this turn, but at the same time doesn't want to allow the Xerneas to get a free Geomancy off. We're going to see Precipice Blades come out now from the ground on. Going to outspeed this Nihiligo here. Going to pick up the knockout, take it down, and take away Costa's ability to remove and deal with this Xerneas effectively as it does get the Geomancy boost up and put itself into a phenomenal position to close this game out. Now Costa really on the back foot. He still has his Rayquaza. He still has Incineroar to bring in. It does have that fake out support, but what has Costa really got now in his arsenal to kind of get around this setup? You kind of, if you've got Hayes on the Finny, which we saw he has, you want to get Finny onto the field next to the Incineroar um, so you can utilize that. But getting that board position and achieving that board position now is going to be extremely difficult, especially with the crowd on checking everything that comes in that would otherwise disrupt um, the Xerneas on your own side of the field. So we do see the Incineroar come in. It is going to get that Intimidate support onto the Groudon. We're going to see Groudon switch straight out and Incineroar hit the field once again for Yorin, get the Intimidate onto this Rayquaza and the Incineroar. And you've got to imagine that the Xerneas and Yorin's end of the field just wants to protect so it has that fake out support and for a bit more ease going into the next turn to allow a bit more mobility. As we see the Rayquaza on Costa's side of the field going to Mega Evolve and try and claw this game back if he can. We are going to see the Delta Stream activate. Obviously, the Desolate Land has left the field now, so free to activate as we do see a Protect from the Xerneas on your own side of the field. We are going to see a Fake Out from the Incineroar here into that Xerneas to prevent it doing any damage this turn with the Dragon Ascent now into that slot as well. So a bit of a dead turn here and the Incineroar on your own side of the field free to fire out a Fake Out if it wants to this next turn. It requires a switching out because it is so pressured with the Tapu Fini now hitting the field. Trying to get in to utilize that Hayes, but it might be just too much for Costa now to be able to do this as we do see the Misty Terrain activate fake out from the Incineroar onto the opposing Incineroar and a Moonblast now fired out from the Xerneas into this Tapu Fini slot and doing some big damage. And it is actually more than enough to pick up the knockout here onto this Tapu Fini after the boosts and the Incineroar flinching here. So it feels like the game could be over now. And Yorin, all he has to do is go through the motions to close this one up. But this has been an incredible set here for both players as we do see the closing stages of this matchup here coming out and the forfeit coming out and Yorin picking up the victory there and taking a big win in week four so that is an incredible way to end up this episode so the results from week four you can see Krim beating Marcus 2-1 Alex 2 Salty Electabuzz nil Worms I nil Will 2 Nightlight nil, Ryan PB Herbert 2, Nappy picking up a victory versus Pinko 2 nil, Johnny Hacks 1, Stu 2, Salkrin 2, Cameron nil, Costa 1, Yorine 2, that is the feature match that we just featured in this episode, Chancy Mancy nil, Shade 2, Shade having a very strong start to this Ultra Series, carrying on after that Moon Series victory, Kazumi 2, Pokemati VGC nil, Xenovis Ace 1, and Luigi 2. So we've had some incredible games games this week really props to all of the players as well and I hope you guys at home have enjoyed this feature match today it was a really backwards and forwards match and a really solid one I do believe that there was a misclick in game three from from Costa um, which I will get into and hopefully report back on in our next episode I do think there was a little misclick timeout on one of the turns in game three which gave your eye the opportunity to get set up and really start steamrolling in that match but really top and high rated match from both players and really incredible to see so hats off to your eye for picking up a nice victory there and also to Costa as well for putting up such a good battle against your eye and really giving us such a good entertaining battle there so I hope you guys have enjoyed this this week's episode we'll be back very soon with week five to wrap up the swish poor the Swiss poor of this tournament and um, until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye